welcome back to some new r slash petty revenge stories, where people share small victories over those who frank them. I hope you had a great day. Thanks for all the likes and comments on the last video. And now, let's start with the first story. It's called Bad New Manager. Years ago, I worked as a cook for a greasy spoon style restaurant just off the interstate that was connected to a hotel. The boss that hired me was great. Got his paperwork done during the slow part of the day in 15 minutes and worked side by side with us. The company fired this manager and replaced him with an awful manager who didn't drive, lived 15 miles away and had to take two city buses to get to work. So she was never on time. She was also a raving alcoholic and it seemed to take her hours to do the same paperwork our old boss could do in 15 minutes. She abused everyone in the restaurant and power tripped constantly. So one day I checked my schedule and I see I'm scheduled for 11 to 7. As far as I knew, we weren't a 24 hour restaurant. So I showed up at 11 am for my shift and the manager asked me why I was there. I told her she scheduled me from 11 to 7. Her reply was that my shift was from 11 pm to 7 am because she was making our restaurant a 24 hour restaurant due to the hotel being attached to the restaurant. I worked the shift but looked for a different job as well. In the interim, the manager took 3 hours off my paycheck because she found out that I dozed for 15 minutes on the clock. Remember, she doesn't drive and buses don't run overnight where I am. So she had no way to determine how long I dozed off for and the doors were unlocked too. I corrected the time card and she changed it back with a note saying, I am your manager. I finally found a better job and said nothing to anyone at work. However, on my last night, a Friday night, I refused to work. My boss tried to work my shift but couldn't stay awake to do it and wound up calling in a few first shift workers early. She tried to give me brief about it when I stopped in to get my last check, but I just smiled and walked away. That restaurant ended up closing down. I'd like to think her poor management had something to do with that. The next story is called No Parking for Karen. On Friday, I was waiting to pick up my spouse from a medical appointment. He emerges, limping and sore from a guided injection in the hip. He slowly gets in the car and tells me how it went. I start the car, put it in reverse and wouldn't you know it, there's a driver who wants the space. Will they reverse to give me room? No. So I wait for them to move. They don't. I wait. They wait. This is in a busy road and it's angled parking nose in. Still waiting, been over a minute. I decided that we need milk, so I turn the car off and tell my spouse to sit tight and let me know what happens. I come back out to him chuckling with a huge grin on his face. Turns out impatient Karen blared the horn twice and finally drove forward and realized there was no driver in the car, blared the horn again and sped off. First time I have been this petty for a while. The third story is called Tourist Con. I was around 7 or 8 at the time. We had gone on summer holiday to Italy and were going to Venice for the day. My parents hadn't traveled much and it was actually my father's first trip abroad. We get to Venice in our car and park up. My parents are trying to find a place where they can buy tickets for a ferry or boat across. Nobody speaks a lot of English. A man sees them looking around and approaches them and guides us towards the small boat. There's another couple in the boat and he gives a decent crowd for sailing us across. My parents agree. However, once on the boat, the price changes drastically and the man and his two partners become quite threatening and are refusing to let anyone off the boat if they don't pay. After a very long discussion, my parents and the other couple end up just having to pay. They basically all pay all the money they have in cash, which when traveling in the 80s was quite a lot. The boat docks in a small passage 
and at the end of it, you can see Saints Mark Square. My mother makes sure that she is the last one to leave the boat. As she prepares to get off the boat, she quickly grabs all the money from the man's back pocket. Yes, he was stupid enough to put it there, and it's stuck up a bit, jumps off the boat, and because the men on the boat are so surprised that anyone would dare to do that, they don't immediately react, and we all manage to make it to the square, and so they can't follow. My mother, of course, gives the other couple their money back, and my parents have their money back, and the trip actually ended up costing them nothing. I am still impressed that she had the courage to do so. The last story is called Common Courtesy. As many of you may be aware, there's common courtesy when getting off your flight. You simply wait until passengers in the rows in front of you have made their way into the aisle or exit, and then you get out when it's your turn. I already get annoyed at the people who stand up and grab their carry-ons immediately after the plane parks. But this flight was different. The front of the plane started deboarding, and as soon as one of the early standers would see an opening, they would cut off the rows in front of them to enjoy the small victory of getting off the plane a few minutes sooner. After witnessing this happen a few times, I was ready to do something about it. There were only a few rows left until it was my turn, and I can already see a few more of the early standers, eagerly awaiting the opportunity to cut in front of people. To make matters worse, there were passengers in my row who were clearly in no rush to get off the plane, so the cutters could sneak their way past after me. As soon as I got up, I blocked the aisle with my buddy and asked the other passengers of my row if they needed help with their bags. One by one, I slowly got their carry-ons out of the overhead bins and waited for each one to go on their way. Then I turned to the row opposite of mine and did the same for them. Probably only took around 45 seconds total, but felt great, knowing that the cutters were unable to cut off at least my entire row. Thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And if you have time, watch another one of my videos. And now, I hope you have a great day. See you soon. Bye bye.